And here he is, Pidge Lord, world's fattest pigeon. They're looking for food right now. He can barely support his own weight. It is just after six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. God, what am I thinking? Uh, we have overnight a cured bathtub. Um, it's nice and solid on the inside. Um, I'm going to stick my gloves on and then I'll see if I can pop this out the mould. And I am going to stick my gloves on because epoxy is horrible stuff. I've got rashes on both my forearms, that one's a bit easier to see, behind my ears, on my neck. And it's just, I, th I think it's the epoxy dust rather than the epoxy resin itself because I've been quite careful with the resin. But with the dust, it's impossible. It just goes everywhere. So. Nitro gloves, not vinyl, because they don't, not perfectly sealing. Definitely not latex, because they don't work at all. This should be good though. If it wasn't so fucking early in the morning, I'd be pumped about demolding this carbon fibre thing. Here's how we look before I start ripping this apart. Corners, they came out alright, the ripple is right on the line, so it looks like that's going to be okay. There's a little bit of excess resin here. That was quite heavy handed on the corners. So that's uh, that, that's more weight than you need. Um, so if you want a really light part, you want to avoid having any excess resin. But you, well, you can just see where it's pulled a bit in the middle. Because where the extra thick resin was poured on. Generally speaking, the bathtub is in good shape. Let's crack this out the mould. So there's a fair old amount of overhang here. I did, I think next time I, I should trim up the carbon cloth to be more precise to the part because it was trickier to work with with all these bits flapping around. So I think next time I'll trim it up more. But at least it means I've got a nice excess. I should be able to pull it off fairly easily. I'm going to rip it off and hope my Hope my wax has done its job. And sure I didn't wax the top edge, that's perhaps a mistake. Just gonna pull down and try and free that off the gel coat a little. Now, I've since learned that there's a thing called split moulding. Which I think would be the way for for something like this. You get your two moulds and then it joins up in the centre. And it looks like that might be a more appropriate technique for something this size with the complex curves. Because then you can just crack the mould in this like in the centre here. You just crack it and pull the two halves open. Now if any of you watched the calamity that was the demoulding, or well when I took the mould plug out of this casting mould. You'll have seen how much difficulty I had trying to get it to release. This, on the other hand, I think was going to be much easier because I can already, like, there's enough flex. I could get a tool under there if I needed to. So I'm just going to do it with my fingers and gently prise up. Start releasing the carbon fibre from the mould. And hopefully, Hopefully the wax will have done its job. I mean, I'm sure I could just get my hands in and just tear this open, but I don't want to. I want to try and um, be gentle, especially... Oh, well, there we go. That just kind of fell out. That is a carbon fiber hood scoop. Wow, it's light. It's so light. Fresh out the mold, no holds barred. There's disadvantages of wetly are quite apparent because there's some, some gaps in the epoxy. 
this is no matter how much rolling that I did, I'm still getting gaps. There's going to be some smoothing needed. I don't know what's I don't know what's going on here. Like it is cast, like the resin's there. I wonder if it's cracked off on the bottom of the bowl. No, the bowl's good. It's quite a big hole in the resin there. I wonder if there's anything I can do about that. Or if that is why I would need to then vacuum bag. I wonder if vacuum bagging it is the only way to solve that. So let me trim this up and then see how it looks and then we can start cleaning it up. There's a lot of dust in here now. I'm gonna open the door and I'm gonna leave. I can't believe how much heat is coming off this part on the grinder when I'm chopping this stuff. Unbelievable. Uh, I'm gonna leave the shed for a while. A little longer than a few minutes later. Status update. Trimming is complete and we have a hood scoop. I am pretty pleased with that so far. It is in dire need of some touch up and some polish, definitely. But it is way lighter than a stock part. It's still, it's still got some stiffness, so that's me trying to flex it sideways and it's not gonna go. Um, flexing on the actual scoop, this part is, is pretty flexible. But it is much plenty for a scoop. I wonder how light that actually is. Can I measure that? Here is my tower of measuring. Here we go. Can I balance that? 394 grams. 1073 grams. And that's for what's left, not including pieces that I've already chopped off. So that is a quarter of the weight. It is 236% of the size. It's way bigger and it's way cooler because it's carbon fiber. Now what I need to do is dab in some epoxy to try and fill holes like this one. I mean it's still rigid but like lacquer can only do so much so I'm going to have to get some epoxy and try and drop into these holes and leave that to cure. It'll still get a layer of uh, lacquer on the top but lacquer will only smooth out so much. I'm going to have to fill these holes with uh, a bit of extra epoxy and then sand it back. Yay, I'm back to sanding epoxy again. But this will be worth it because I can get a better surface finish uh, off it. Now it's been requested and I will do a video where I go through all of the costs. I, at the moment, just off the top of my head, like total investment in tools and stuff like that, like if, if you went out and bought everything that I've bought, you'd be looking at spending about 500 pounds. But to actually make this, you're gonna be somewhere around 60 in materials. Uh, so getting started is expensive, but actually cranking these out, you maybe be like £60. I'll do a full cost breakdown video where I detail everything that I've bought and everything that you would need so that you can see all that detail and I'll have to do a like five minute super cut video uh, as a instructional video because I, I know some people are getting lost because it's a complicated process but I, I hope it makes more sense now that you see this thing in my hand but I would like to put out a, an instructional shorter video so you can see what you would need to do if you wanted to repeat the task. Another important thing to note is that my orange juice is ruined. Look at this. Look at all the manky carbon fibre dust floating around in there. That was my fault. Started sanding immediately after pouring myself a drink. What a dumb idea. Right, we know the drill now. I've got my epoxy ma mixed up, face masks on, nitrile gloves are on. I'm just going to drop into some of these little pockets, uh, some epoxy. Uh, so a small brush, dip in the epoxy and then try and plug up some of these holes. By the way, if, if you understand why I'm getting these little, little pockets, if you understand that, please tell me in the comments. And John, I'm pretty much looking at you. Um, if you understand why we're getting these little pockets in the mold, uh, like what is that? Am I just not using enough epoxy? Because I did brush the entire, I brushed the entire mold with epoxy before I put my first layer down, and it was rolled out. The only thing I can think is that I'm not using enough epoxy. 
But the next step after this is to, to go with resin infusion and vacuum bag the whole thing where it gets much more expensive. Although, at this rate, I think that's what we're going to end up doing. I'll probably end up with a vacuum kit next. Anyway, let me do this thing before my resin and hardens. I reckon less is more. Last time I did this, I used way too much. So drop in a little bit of resin. And then I'm going to have to come back and sand off the excess later. Because you know how much I enjoy sanding resin. The idea was this. I'll let that cure for a couple of days and then I'll have to sand it back until it's completely flat before I lacquer it. Three days later. Well, after a couple of days playing sanding simulator, let me show you what I got. That is all nice and smooth. It doesn't look smooth, it looks like it's, you know, like a sandpapery finish, but it is all smoothed up. I wonder if I can see a spot where... So here was where one of the bubbles was. And it's sanded absolutely smooth. Another one over here, there's quite a big one here. Filled. Another big one there. Filled. So it does, uh, it works by just dropping in extra epoxy. Now the real magic is going to happen. Because in our next instalment, I'm going to lacquer this up and then polish it with the fine compounding stuff and then this thing will turn into shiny shiny carbon fibre so thank you for joining me on yet another sanding episode we've learned some more things I've definitely learned that water on the, the part when you're sanding it is very important because the dust just gets everywhere uh, and this, this epoxy is no joke uh, like as I've gone on I've started using more and more safety gear I wonder if I can show you you see this patch on my arm here, see where it's red? That was a tiny little dot, and then I rubbed it all off. This was another piece of epoxy which got on my skin and I didn't notice it, so it soaked in longer. I've still got my splinters, there's one. There's another patch on my wrist here. So yeah, seriously, this stuff is this stuff is no joke. I've joined a Facebook group called Epoxy Is Not Your Friend, and it's full of like old women making um, Weird like fruit bowls and cups and stuff, and and they're all got these rashes and they've got big blistered eyes like they've been stung by a big bee. Uh, so yes, epoxy is no joke. Anyway, um, next episode I will lacquer it and polish it up, and then that should be like the finished article. And then I just need to wait for quarantine to end so that I can go and fit it on the car. Right, thank you for watching. Uh, questions, comments, likes in the boxes down below. Thank you for all your wisdom and uh, support so far. Looks like we've got some new people who know nothing about our drift project, but they have come to learn about epoxy and carbon fibre. So welcome, everybody. But that's it for me. Thanks, everyone. Look after yourselves, make good decisions, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.